The English language is an ancient edifice, very strongly built, which resists change. It retains its idiosyncrasies, such as words in the language, which bear no relation to what they're referring to. For instance, there is no country in the world called Germany. There is no town called Vienna. And there is actually no place called Gallipoli. But the English language soldiers on, full of confidence in its own verbality. However, the development of technologies, and especially the popularity of the internet, have caused some changes to occur in the way the language is presented, especially as it's presented on our computer screens in the internet, which has given me cause to wonder, will internet language wash our feet? Now, already there has been criticism of how language is presented on the internet. One writer wrote that it is a poisonous mixture of acronyms, abbreviations, and neologisms. This is not quite fair, because we've had acronyms and abbreviations for many, many years, and neologisms are new words that have to be invented to describe something new. And with the internet, things like blog, emoticon, and hashtag are new. So there has to be a new word for them, quite obviously. However, there is surgery being done on words we already know and know the meaning of and have done for a long time, and which are being presented in internet use in quite a different context. For instance, we are frequently told that two people met on the internet. Now, they didn't meet at all. They've never seen each other. <laughs> They've never been in the same room. They don't know how tall they are or what their voice sounds like for real. They have made electronic contact. That's what they did. <laughs> but this is called, they met. And it goes further. We're told that they sometimes go internet dating, but without holding hands. There is internet grooming, which usually ends up rather dodgily, I'm told. <laughs> There's another word which has meant the same thing for 800 years. We all know it. It means a close association with someone you're fond of. The word is friend. But now, you can have a friend you've never seen or heard of, and you're not quite sure whether the photo of them is actually a photo of them at all. <laughs> the big advantage, of course, is that for, if anything goes wrong, the friend can be unfriended. <laughs> now, as students, we studied the text of Shakespeare, or the text of the King James Bible. This has now developed um, a present tense, texting, and a past tense, texted, uh, which some people can't pronounce. Now, we have chat rooms in which nobody chats. We can, <laughs> we can tweet without making any sound at all. <laughs> you do not need water to go surfing. <laughs> and scissors and a brush are not needed to cut and paste. <laughs> Nor do you need an axe if you want to go hacking. <laughs> Software isn't soft. And the one that really disturbs us people in a city is the word we are told to back up, which used to mean finding a parking space in the inner city. <laughs> it goes on and on. Only sheep tails need docking. And we have firewalls now with no steel and no bricks. We have things which have never been near an oven that are called cookies. <laughs> there is occasionally a virus which no medical science can cure. <laughs> a cloud which some of us are connected to that is never mentioned on the weather report. And as many of us know, we have a mouse which isn't scared of cats. <laughs> now, in spite of the inventiveness that has been shown with language on the internet, one symbol remains without a name. I refer to the at symbol in the emails, one of the most frequent things seen. It hasn't got a name. The word, the at symbol, comes from the Italian word amphora, which was a beautiful old vase of exact measurement. And the amphora was used for the sale of liquids, wine and oils, by the measure inside the jar and written with that curly Italianate A, which looks quite decorative. 
over time, the use of the amphora moved into general business. Business factions used the word to mean, used the A to mean at the price of. And that happened right here in New Zealand for fabric, four yards at four shillings per yard, and that's what the docket said, and that's why it went on to um, typewriter keyboards. Every docket in New Zealand at one time said that with the A symbol. It also went on later to computer keyboards for the same reason. Now, in 1971, a man called Ray Tomlinson wanted to send a message on his computer to another person, but he needed to identify where it came from and how they could reply. So he looked at the keyboard. He didn't want to use a letter or a number because that could confuse the message. So he sent it on the amphora, the at symbol. And this went for the first email message ever in 1972. It was an immediate success. And curiously enough, languages which don't use English letters use this all the time. Tamil, Japanese, Arabic. And they all have a name for it. The Germans call it a spider monkey. <laughs> it's also called a pig's tail and elephant's trunk in the Scandinavian na nations. Hungarians call it the cat's tail, and in other countries it's known as the worm. Israel calls it the strudel. And Holland calls it the snail. In F Czechoslovakia, it's known as the rolled up herring. Now, we, in English, have stubbed our toe. We have no name for it at all. We simply call it the at symbol, which is very boring, and, or sometimes the commercial at. And there are occasions where people have got the name wrong, and they confuse it with ampersand, which is this. Now, ampersand is the correct abbreviation of the word and. It has nothing whatever to do with the at symbol for emails. So if you hear ampersand, they're wrong, but we don't have a name for the at symbol. However, there is one internet word commonly used which has a much more colorful history. It dates back to 1937 when the Hallbell Company in America produced a product that they were about to sell. They didn't want to call it pork loaf, and they weren't allowed to call it ham because it had other things besides ham. So $100 was offered to anyone who could come up with a name for this product. And a man called Kenneth Dainio in New York took the word spice and the word ham, put them together, and made spam. He won the $100, and for ever since, spam has been sold right around the world. However, in Britain, a very funny comedy troupe called Monty Python did a sketch where they all went into, on television, they went into a terrible cafe where everything that was sold was mixed with spam. Everything. And none of them wanted spam, so they all sang a song. They got very outraged, and they sang spam, 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 spam. Now, that went out on air in uh, December 1970. It was a huge success. And somewhere along the line, someone started to associate the word spam with that which was freely available and unwanted. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> the perfect description of junk email. So we had a whole new internet word. Now, where is this language evolution going? What is going to happen? Are we to accept the fact that met doesn't mean met and that mouse doesn't mean mouse? Well, the only answer I could find is to have a look at the King of England in 1016. A rather strange comparison, but the King of England in 1016 has been given a very bad rap because his name was King Canute. And for some bizarre reason, people strongly believe that he thought he could control the tide. The truth is exactly the opposite. King Canute was so tired of being told how famous and how powerful a king was that he said, there are some things I cannot do. I cannot, for instance, control the tide, and I will show you how. So the king took his courtiers. There is only one, his, one document in history which tells the story. There it is. Canute set his throne by the seashore. He commanded the tide to halt and not to wet his feet. Yet continuing to rise as usual, the tide dashed over his feet and legs without respect to his royal person. Then the king leapt backwards, saying, 
Let all men know how empty and worthless is the power of kings. And for heaven, earth, and the sea obey only the eternal laws. He knew he couldn't control the tide. And the internet language of which I've been speaking is like a tide which we cannot control, the royal family cannot control. It evolves. So I think it will wash over our feet. Thank you.